Hello replay viewers. I haven't done a live periscope in a while, so here I am walking in the back of the back section of a park with some of my buddies. Hey Angie, nice to see you pop in. So this is a park. This corner is, is left kind of in the wild state. Pelican tracks. Yeah, there's some pelican tracks here. Here's some pelican tracks. Actually, they're not, those aren't pelican tracks. Are these yours from yesterday? No, those are not my pelican. Yeah, actually, that is mine. <laughs> these, these are my pelican. I think these are my pelican tracks. Are you okay, Angie? How is, is it serious? So, most of this park is, is what you normally would think of a park as being that is uh, safe. This is the wild section out in the, one of the corners, and they had to put in fire breaks. So we get to walk along one of the fire breaks. Not serious. Okay, good. Did you get a few days off, Angie? I was here yesterday in, in this area. We're walking to a geocache. Good. We're walking to a geocache. Those are my two buddies in front of me with their poke sticks. I found this one yesterday. It just came out yesterday, a brand new one. So I wasn't planning to come out here, but I did. I bicycled six miles just to start looking. And then had to bicycle. You can't really bicycle in this stuff, so a lot of it I was walking on. It was a long day. Hi, Ed. So my friends wanted to go geocaching. It's always nice to go with company. I don't mind walking to the one I was at yesterday. Because I figured I could do a periscope and show you a little bit of Wickham Park and their bums. I asked them both if they minded if I did this with them in, in the front there. Jim knows his way. It's just a kind of a long walk, that's all. Occasionally you'll see a, a tortoise. It's not really the best weather, it's a little cool. You can see they're both wearing jackets. I'm wearing a jacket too, even though you almost don't need to. So you can see how this is tough going for a bicycle. It's all sand. Very fine sugar sand. Thank you for those, uh, those orangey hearts. Appreciate it. So Rich came and picked me up in a Jeep that has no doors. You don't need doors on a Jeep in Florida because it's never cold. At least that's the, uh, the thinking. If it's raining, well, good luck. Here's a little bit of interesting mushrooms. I have to sort of watch where I'm going here a little bit. All right, we're gonna get out of this. Hello, hello, whoever's saying hello. All right, go off the sand finally. The ladies are walking. I hate walking in sand. I don't need this jacket on now. I'm working up a sweat. Angie, my, I, I finally figured it out after years or decades of, of not liking walking in the sand. I figured out I don't like it because my feet are too narrow. I'm not sure if that's actually correct. Even when I was little, I didn't like walking in the sand. So you have to go this, this way for a considerable distance. And then those two get to go to the bushes and thrash around for a while. I could lead them right to it. But I think Rich would, uh, would appreciate discovering it on his own. I did give Jim a clue. I said to bring his stick. I didn't have, a, I didn't have one of the th things they have. I had to use a branch which I uh, ripped off a dead tree. Occasionally they'll have controlled burns in various sections of this park. You can see over here, there's lots of dead trees. That's from a couple years ago when all this scrub was burned and the small trees were also uh, killed. I gotta keep up the pace. I'm gonna shout. 
You can see the Pelican track now. The Pelican track is, is the line made by my bicycle wheel. That's a little joke between Jim and me. I went and got a cache one day and then he went to get it the next day around here somewhere. Oh, I can't breathe. And he followed my track right to it, my bicycle track. So now that's our little joke. Hello, Rotary. I'm never quite sure how to pronounce that. So we get to go for a little walk in the park. This isn't the normal kind of park. This section is kept in a wild state with some fire breaks. And those are my two buddies up in front of me. I, we're going for geo, they're going for the geocache that I found yesterday. So in the distance, you might be able to see some cars on a distant street. Slow down, I can't slow down. I gotta keep up with these people, like Rottweiler. Yeah, I'm dressed too, I'm dressed way too heavy. The thing is, my friend Rich came and picked me up in a Jeep that has no doors. So I had to put a coat on for that trip. And I probably should have taken it off once we got here. But, oh well. I'll unzip it a little more in a minute. You can see they're dressed in coats. I certainly don't need this jacket on right now. This is why I bring a bicycle to this park. Anytime you can pedal, you'll go twice as fast as you can walk. Every little bit helps. A lot of this section I had to walk pushing my bicycle yesterday. Yeah, see, now I'm catching whoever said to go faster. No, who said to go slower? Well, I've caught up. I can go a little slower. This isn't snow, this is white sand. Very fine white sand in Florida. Thank you for those orange effects again. How's the wind? I have a microphone on. I hope the wind isn't too much. So up ahead, you probably can see some traffic passing in the distance. Up ahead, we make a little bit of a left turn. And then off they go into the bushes. Now I'm not going, I've already been in the bushes. That's right. I love the bicycle. It's a lot easier once you get off this, this sandy section. So I'm not actually going to go in with them to get the geocache. I was in there yesterday. It was a lot warmer than it is today. And I'm glad I brought a bottle of water because I was sweating. Thrashing around in the bushes for about 25 minutes. I made a mistake yesterday. After lunch, I had a Pop-Tart. I wasn't planning to go anywhere. So my stomach was full. Not the best idea when you go off on a bicycle. Yeah, oops. <laughs> I regret that. I regretted that Pop-Tart for about 45 minutes. But I didn't regret making the trip. It was a great afternoon. This new one brought me out here and then there was a lot of, well not a lot, but about nine caches that I haven't found already. So of those nine, I got seven. I think uh, two, I think two were missing. Yeah, we could take a shortcut. See, mountain bikes come through here. Now we're back into the, out of the fire break. Into the wilds of Florida. I met some people the other day from Ohio. They come by looking for alligators. And I said, you're not going to find any alligators around here. They don't live near homes, generally. Unless you have a pond. Some of you from Ohio, who knows where the alligators live? I was pointing out to them that where, where, we, where we were standing, there's no place for food. It's all houses and walled up. 
But around here you might see a tortoise. The other day I came across a giant tortoise hole in the ground. Yeah, we're going on a treasure hunt. I've already found the treasure. This one's a, a large plastic ammo can, sort of an ammo can thing, with a whole bunch of toys in it, little toys for children to exchange. So they basically know where they're going. But once you get close, then you follow your, your compass on your phone or your GPS, and it leads you to more or less the right spot. And once you're pretty close, then you've got to search around and figure out where would somebody hide something. So 90% of the time you're, you're doing this. You're going around. So you get to see new places, have a walk, be outside. It's, it's the next level up from Pokemon. Because actually there's a point to this. You go find something. Some of them are a lot harder. Now, you, once you find the container, yeah they, have, yeah, they have walking sticks, which are probes, you're right. So once you find the container, every container has a paper that you sign. You put your name on it, saying you were there. And the bigger ones will have little trinkets for children, because if you bring the kids along, they get a real thrill about swapping little toys. So they have to bring some toy from home. And then they get to choose. See, these guys are going the wrong way. Watch this. Let's see, watch this. Let's see when they, when they figure out they're going the wrong way. Should I tell them? Hey! If you think so. If you think so, go ahead. I was there yesterday. Have some faith. I, don't know if we trust you. I can get you within 60 feet by going on the clear ground. Jim doesn't think he can trust me. You well, know, go ahead. You take the low road, we'll take the high road. See who gets there first. How's that song go? No, I didn't make the, mis the same mistake yesterday. I followed my arrow right to where we're going. My GPS gives me a big red arrow and the distance. So wouldn't, wouldn't you rather go this way? We don't need the nice path going the other way. Now, you would think this would be an easy thing to get to except for this fence. Right, I'll, I'll go a little ways into the bushes. Let's see how well I do. I was in these bushes so much. I, I, I should probably show you what, what getting to a geocache is involved. I have to make sure my microphone cord doesn't get caught up. What's holding up the line? We're getting messages in Arabic to hurry up. Underlay, they say. So tall people don't do so well in this, in this particular one. Yeah, so you, geocaching isn't always about an easy walk. Keep going guys, I need space to come out. There, so I ducked under that. No, I'm not, I'm not telling them where to go, they're gonna have to figure it out. Rich, especially Rich, enjoys a challenge. I got it. For me, it's off to your left. This is where I spent 25 minutes yesterday, thrashing around in these bushes. I was trying to f see. They're looking. They both have different devices. He said I wasn't being polite. Well, I probably wasn't being polite, but they're both my buddies. 
and they can appreciate some humor. Oh sure, they get stolen. They get stolen occasionally. Some some are public and other ones are, are members only. All right, I'm gonna get out of their way. They're coming back. We're gonna try that direction. Hello. Hi, Steve from Florida. Steve, does this look familiar to you? Ugh. This is what a good geocache is all about. Thrashing around in the under underbrush. Yeah, it's in the... Whoa, who would have guessed <laughs> that it's in the woods? How, how far do you have, Rich? 30 feet. 30 feet. Is that right or wrong? Rich wants me to give away my secret. So we've, we've had our walk. We're at, at what we call ground zero. I did, I did warn, warn Jim yesterday to bring a pokey stick. That's why I was here 25 minutes. I didn't have a pokey stick. And I finally made one out of a dead tree branch. And I poked it and finally found it. And then I went to, to get it and I had to move around a little bit and I couldn't see it anymore. So that was crazy. Oh, look who's here. Is that, is that Bryzy? Bryzy, did you just come in? Or is that somebody else? Hey, Beezy, I misread your name, sorry about that. So the, the long walk to, to the ground zero where the geocache is hidden is over. Now we're at ground zero and, and because of all this tree cover and inaccuracies of the GPS, you have to hunt around. And that's what they're doing. I was here yesterday, I, I did this yesterday for 25 minutes, back and forth in the end of bush. So now they're checking the GPS. The number fluctuates because the tree cover makes it jump around. And in this, in this kind of thing, look at this. In this kind of thing, if you're off by more than a few feet, good luck. Yeah, they're figuring out north, south, east, and west. It's very interesting to see how, when I know where something is, the, uh, the approach that other people take. No, it doesn't give off a signal. You have to use... So what you get is the person that put the geocache in place took some coordinates, and they're published with the geocache listing. And then you use your GPS or your phone to go to where the coordinates match up. But there's two problems. One is the person that took the coordinates probably didn't come back here more two or three times and average them, so his numbers are a little wrong. And now that you're here, your numbers are a little wrong because of the tree cover and, and how the satellites are and all that. So you can't really expect to be spot on, especially when it's when all this uh, all this overgrowth is here. So the GPS never is, is, is really spot on, but you, you, hopefully you get to a place which is, uh, well, if I was hiding a geocache, where would I put it? And then you look around in what looks like a promising place, but, but in this area, yeah, someone could move it, and that does happen. People do move them. You're supposed to put it back exactly as you found it. Especially in this business, if someone moved this, you, you'd be finished. Now this area over here is pretty obvious. There's nothing there because you can see you can see down. But but like where where Jim's poking, there could be something underneath all that all that litter. And that's why I told him yesterday to bring a poke stick. Up, oh, backing up. Yeah. So we do employ that technique. If I was a geocache, where would I hide? You're looking for an ammo can. Yeah, so it shouldn't be that hard. It wouldn't be that hard. 
I was here 25 minutes yesterday, so don't feel bad. And I went all around this section until my GPS finally settled on a promising looking place. That was hot work yesterday. I drank most of a bottle of water by the, when I was finished. So this is better than hunting because you don't shoot anything. Now that he's out of range, Jim has gone off in completely the wrong direction. He's, he's 60 feet away from where he should be. Jonathan JK is here? No way. What time is it? Yeah, this is what I, Jonathan, why are you up? This is what I get up to when you're sleeping. You can watch the replay to see my walk. I was here yesterday, I came by bicycle as far as I could. My friends haven't got, this is a brand new geocache, it just came out. So my friends have it on their to find list. I got it yesterday, I was the first person to find it. And here we are again. I can tell you now, because they're both off in the wrong place there, but both my friends are looking, they're both experienced geocachers. If everyone's quiet. So everyone's quiet. The geocache is at the bottom of this tree on the other side. And both my friends now have gone off in hugely wrong di directions. Just like I did yesterday for 25 minutes. I was wandering all over the place. And you see just a little bit in the distance, you can see there's an opening. That's where they stop mowing the grass. And then you end up with with the thickets. This is geocaching in Florida. There, I don't think there are any beehives around here. All right, Jim's coming back, so I'm gonna have to get out of the way. Bear with me. I have to make sure I don't tangle up my my microphone cord on some something that's sticking out. I'm, I'm re-triangulating, coming back in to ground zero from outside. Okay. Jim is re-triangulating. I did some about four or five iterations of re-triangulating re yesterday. Uh, I didn't know Jeff Goldberg was buried in Florida. I thought he was still walking around somewhere. <laughs> Angie. Some people are smart, you know. Of course, we're not going to say anti disestablishmentarianism but re-triangulating is in our vocabulary. So there's Jim over there, going back out into the open space where you get better GPS reception. And then you can sort of say, well, if it says 60 feet in this direction, where does that put me once I get into the bushes? I came in and out of this place at least six times yesterday. And you can see, yeah, I'm not giving any spoilers. I'm, I'm just, uh, just showing basically the agony the eye went through. And, and look, it's, it's not an easy approach. You have to duck under that, you have to duck under this, this thing here, and I'm a tall person. Even when I'm ducked over, I, I, I think I lost my hat about 18 times getting caught on something. <laughs> and there's, there's Jim prodding away with his poke stick. I thought we'd have found it by now. You re hit it really well. I re hit it, I, I re hit it exactly as I found it. Jonathan JK, this is this is what you could be doing in Hong Kong. Doesn't this look like a lot of fun? Of course, you wouldn't have to go for the uh, the ones out in the woods. What? What? Throw you a pal. Okay, oh. pals of pals. Check that piece. Rich. Rich is having some trouble remaining upright. Rich. Yeah, check that pile of stuff. <laughs> He's been giving instructions. Check that pile of stuff. I don't know if you can hear, hear, hear them talking. Check that pile of stuff. Okay. What? what? When you finally found it. When I finally found it. How off were the coordinates? They were not off. They were not off. That's correct. I, I almost quit after 25 minutes thinking the coordinates were off. You know what I should do? Yeah, you know, what, what should you do? I should borrow your GPS. You should. We'd have to put the numbers into it, but that's easy to do. Because you know yours wanders a little. Oh, yours does too. My, yes. Fortunately, mine wandered in the right direction this time. Both, both Jim and Rich are very experienced geocachers. 
Geocache lives do matter. So you can see just... Are you shouting for me? No. Tell them about these trees with the red berries. Uh, do I have any where I'm standing? Yeah, here's one. You have to tell me, you have to refresh my memory. These are pepper trees. They're Brazilian pepper trees. They're, they're an invasive species. Brazilian pepper trees are an invasive species. They're all over Florida. And their little red berries look like little peppers. Geocaching is... You go... Yikes. Invasive species. Geocaching is you go and find something that somebody's hidden. It's some kind of container. The container has to have at least a piece of paper on it where you sign your, your name saying that you were there. The bigger ones also will have tiny little toys and you bring your family with the children. The children love this because you find the geocache, they, they, they've scraped their knee, they've, they've gotten tired of looking, they finally find it, and then they get to open it up and see what kind of cool things they have inside. So they have a toy from home that they bring and they swap it out. They go through all the little toys and they pick one they like the best and they swap it out. And so that's for them, it's really exciting. They don't care much for the search but they want to see the good stuff that's inside. So it's a really nice way of making it uh, family friendly. I'll get out of the way of Rich, who seems to be wanting to come this way. No, he doesn't want to come this way. Are you ready for any hints, guys? Yeah. Was that a yes? Yeah. Rich, if you were smart, you'd come this way. See, he, he follows instructions very well. Yeah, it is really cool. Uh, you have to be willing to, if you do the ones in the woods, to endure some challenges. Hey, Brizey! Brizey, I was hoping you'd show up. Brizey knows exactly... Brizey here uh, is also a geocacher in Australia. And he's taken us on many adventures. I'm going to advance a little bit. Bear with me. I'm getting my cord tangled up. Is it on the ground? Oh. What time? I don't know. I don't know about that. Oh, the PP one. Okay. Well, we can talk about that another time. So, Bryzy, this is geocaching in Florida. We do have to worry about a few spiders, but this area is... I was here yesterday. I was the first to find this geocache. So all the nasty spider webs are now knocked down. We don't have to worry too much about snakes. Uh, there aren't any alligators in the woods. Oh, okay. Chat later. Now, I'll whisper really quietly. The geocache is right here. It's right around the corner from me. Well, oh, Bryzy, I'm not a legend. So I was here 25 minutes doing exactly what my friends were doing, thrashing around in the bushes, all off in the wrong directions. Uh, they're both my friends, so I'll tease them a little bit. But when they ask me for help, it can be dangerous. You can't, you're not going to be robbed. No one's going to come out into this, this, this end of the park. This is a very remote part of the park. Oh, do they have a toy? Yes. Usually if when the person that writes the description will, will say, well, first you go by the size. If it's a large, they're looking, we're looking for geo, they're looking for a geocache. I was here yesterday and found it. So the description will say the cache is a large, which means it has room for stuff. And if the person that wrote the cache description and hit it is uh, astute, then he'll also say that he's put out lots of swag, which is little trinkets and toys for the kids. So it's a family, family, family thing. Generally the larger caches are in more remote places that they won't be find the people wandering around won't find it by accident and, and either destroy it, take things out of it, or, or carry the whole thing away. Now what they don't know is they've gone way too far. Okay, bye Bryzy, thanks for popping in. So I, I did all of this yesterday. I was I was down in that section. There's a banking there that goes into a ditch and a fallen tree, and I looked underneath the fallen roots of the fallen tree. Yeah, unfortunately, the ditch didn't have any water in it. It took me 25 minutes going all around, just like these guys are doing now. Sir, 20 questions? 20 questions. Is it on the ground? Yes, it's on the ground. Excuse me? Was there a second question for the 20 questions? The question from him was, are we close? Yes. Very close. Define very close. Um, My GPS says it's three foot that way. Is that correct? That's not correct. Is this like hot, hot, cold? Well, no, not, not quite, but 
Is it next to a big tree or a little tree? It's next to a big tree. Yeah, there's, there's that one and there's that one. And there's that one. And that one. Oh. Yes, Fletcher. Fletcher knows exactly where to go. Fletcher, where do we go? Fletcher, they want to know where to go. Actually, he already told me where to go. So if Rich put on the scope, it's too late, Rich. You missed your chance. You would have been told exactly where to go. Fletcher, you're right. I'm not joking. Well, I haven't heard a thunk around here. Just means you haven't, uh, haven't been to the right place. I spoke just about everything. But, but it's so... But, is, but, but you missed a place. This is the north side of the tree. It's, it's west, southwest side of the tree. Yeah, I didn't get any clues, and, and these guys the are supposed to be pros, That's so they the should... The and hint, there's, and the there's two of west, them. South... West side of the tree. West, southwest. Yes. Right. So there's Post Road. That's north. So this is the north side of the tree. This yes. This is the west side of the tree. Yes. This is west, southwest. Right? Yes. Uh, Fletcher, you're completely correct. If Rich, Rich is also able to watch my scopes, but he's not using his phone to do that. But if he was watching, he I would know see. exactly where to go at this point. Oh, we could. Why, why would I know that? Because, because Fletcher is telling, telling, making a guess by chance, and he was guessing right. But it's too late because you can't watch the replay till I end the scope. And by then you will have found it. Maybe. <laughs> I hope everyone's amused, including the participants. Fletcher, you should try geocaching if you're this good without even knowing what you're doing. You'd be even better in person. Yeah. It's, it's easy for someone who's not here to say, look there. Well, that's, all, that's the only thing he said. It's the one thing he said. He didn't say anything else. He wasn't making 10 random guesses. She, she, okay, sorry. I don't, I don't have my, well, <laughs> my glasses the other, on. The other thing is, is that it, is it, is it, is it, is it we see we see a, a 20 foot by 20 foot area. That oh, I know. In, oh, I know. It's a horrible. What your tree is, what your phone is pointing at. Well, I was, I was all around too. So he, uh, Fletcher's a she, by the way. Uh, well, all right. Whoever would lose patience very quickly, you can always give up and do easier ones. We know that the ones in this this part of the park with the very thick undergrowth are difficult. Are we at the right tree? Well, are we at the right tree? You're at the right tree. Okay. Um, so I've really narrowed it so, down so now. For Fletcher and everybody else, this is a one square mile park. This is a one square mile park. And um, there have been, since I started caching six years ago, Can I have found uh, more than 240 caches in this one square mile area. And this is the only one that I haven't found that's currently active. So and, I must, and, and I some must of them, find it. Some of them are more... All right, Fletcher says, tell him, start looking and less talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, Fletcher. Where is Fletcher? Fletcher, where are you? Mississippi. Ah, uh, Gulf Coast? <laughs> Gulf Coast. Can you hear Jim talking or should I just relay? So geocaching. Fletcher, go to geocache. All right, anybody that's watching. You all can go to that's like, that's blah, blah, blah. That's I did have like no clues. Biloxi. Fletcher is in Biloxi. Oh, yes. I was stationed at Keyflake. Jim was stationed around there. I spent the night there once. I spent more than So anyone that's watching, and I have 32 viewers, you can all go to geocaching.com, sign up for a free account, and go, go to the same thing. Tell, tell Fletcher, my Fletcher, my grandmother lived in past Christiane. Can you hear Jim shouting, Fletcher? Yeah, she, she can hear you. My mother lived in Pat's Christiane. That house is totally gone. Thanks to Katrina. We are just tearing up this. Was, she, was she there during Katrina? No, she was past. She, was there, she was there for Camille, though. Uh, I've got to watch out. I'm getting tangled up with a branch in my microphone cord. He was there for Camille, but the house was totally destroyed by Katrina. Okay, before you jab me in the stomach with your elbow, you're, you're on the incorrect side of the tree. This is the east side. Yeah, well, I, I... You have not searched the west side completely. Which one missing? Fletcher lost everything to Katrina. Oh. 
Nice butt shots. Thanks, I have a nice butt. It's an ammo can. It's an ammo can. Ammo can. Holy fuck. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you're good now, Fletcher. That's that's a horrible thing to have to contend with. Yeah, he cussed. He cussed because how hard is it to find an ammo can? It's a large object, which you will be seeing momentarily, I hope. All right, another person says, come on, find it already. We are all, you, have, you have a cheering section. They're all with you. They just want you to find it. This ammo can is one of the largest containers that we normally use for geocaching, which usually means a quick find. Especially if all the clues they've been given just to speed the process up a little, little bit mini ammo no it's a it's a full-size ammo can it's not one of those super-sized ones it's just your normal just like the one we found a minute ago that size there'll be plastic or metal plastic ah No, no one's taking it. That sounds like a metal one. Maybe I misremembered. Yay, Rich! Did you hear that thunking, folks? It's a metal one. Holy cow, how, how long has this scope been running for? All right, I'll zoom in with, I'll, I'll walk in and you can get to see the swag. Swag. Uh, swag. Stuff, stuff we all get. Is it, there is there a trackable in there? One of those coins? You know, no, a little thing. No, this is the trackable. All right, so there's one trackable, one log paper. My lens is up in the corner. Yeah. And this is all stuff. This is swag for the children. Yeah, every kid should have a pet spider. Especially for the mother. For the little sister. There you go. So there's Rich, has signed, signed his name and he signed Jim's name. I don't know if I can focus on that. <laughs> no, I just, I, my lens only goes so close. So anyway, the log file has been signed. It, all right, you have to wear some, the nose and glasses now. Boy. <laughs> He's gonna do it too. Official geocacher. <laughs> that's better than what's the, that's better. What's that? The Snapchat. <laughs> All right, folks, we've, we've succeeded in finding this. Um, Jonathan JK, if you're still still watching, go back to bed. We'll go back to sleep. Get some rest. So I'm going to scope out. Let's find a find an angle to scope out from here. Thanks for everyone for coming along on this this funny walk. It was pretty hilarious watching them, them thrash around just like I did yesterday in the woods. So, yeah, that was this is good fun. I, I'm glad I was able to do this. Um, it helps. It really helped me to do the scope because I I was not searching. I knew where to go, which is usually not the case. I'd have to be one of the searching people. So I was able to scope without having to to also be burdened by looking. So everyone, take care. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.